And welcome to Houston Newsmakers Extra. We're talking with Dr. Bonnie Dunbar, a retired astronaut now who is really excited about next week. We have the Planetary uh, Congress that's going to be here. Tell me about the organization of space explorers that is doing this, because you're uh, every year, and this is the fourth time in the United States, but the whole group of you really is inspired to go ahead and inspire others to kind of at least want to explore space. Well, we are the only professional organization for astronauts the, and cosmonauts worldwide. We represent, we have over 400 on our roster representing 38 nations, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, people have been in space. The qualification is one orbit around the Earth. And so we actually have some of the commercial astronauts who've flown on the, the Mir space station, for example, mm -hmm. belong to organization. And while the Cold War was still going on, the astronauts and cosmonauts from Apollo-Soyuz, if you remember that mission, right. uh, General Tom Stafford, Alexei Leonov, we docked uh, the Apollo vehicle to the Soviet Soyuz vehicle. That created a relationship, not only among the crew, but the engineers that worked together. And they decided that we needed to sustain that international collaboration. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. created in 1985 with some other European astronauts, and including uh, the astronaut that flew with us from Saudi Arabia, Prince Sultan. They formed the Association of Space Explorers. And it was incorporated as a 501c3 in California, but we are worldwide. So our executive director, Andy Turnage, actually uh, manages the whole worldwide organization. And every year, we're invited to a different country mm -hmm. to have a Congress. Every astronaut pays their own way, but the host nation then uh, uh, supports the rest of the five-day meeting because we're open to the public. We don't charge for our community day. We try to give back to the world, right. basically, about education, communication, inspiration. And, exploration. and how important is that? Because once upon a time when you started and when I was watching the first flights going up, as you said, from your cattle ranch, you saw Sputnik. Uh, when those days were going on, we were watching uh, things happening almost uh, it was regular. We were seeing rockets going up. We saw. So the space program was ever present in our minds. And so kids were more inspired. That's part of what inspired you, was it not? Absolutely. Looking up at the stars, uh, my, my parents taking me out to look for Sputnik, which was only 23 inches in diameter, but because it was a very silvery ball, you could see it orbit and it reflected the sunlight. That was uh, the first man-made object mm -hmm. in orbit mm -hmm. in, in 1957. So in this program with the Congress that's happening next week, one of the things it seems to me is continuing to inspire young people and letting all of us know that the space program and exploring space is important and a lot of that has to do with making sure that the funding continues to help you do the kind of things that you guys started. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I became part of the space industry before I became an astronaut. I was an engineer for Rockwell helping to build the shuttle in mm -hmm. the 70s. And what pulled me, I was the first uh, of my, my family to go to college. Okay. And what pulled me into engineering was this grand venture. You know, it wasn't the push. It was the inspiration. I want to learn that. I want to learn the math. I want to learn the science because I want to be part of exploring. Mm -hmm. uh, we as a species, as humans, we have this uniqueness about us, this uh, intellectual curiosity, wanting to know. And in acquiring all that knowledge, uh, we make our life better. You know, I was born and raised on a ranch, but it was the science and technology and farming and ranching and canning our own food that allowed us to survive, mm -hmm. and there's a science behind that. The science that we're learning now, and we take so much for granted, much of that came from the space program. Our computers, a lot of our health uh, technologies right. came from that mission to the moon. When you see Orion now, which is just huge, it reminds me of Saturn, when you talk about those that kind of size and what it potentially can do going forward, how optimistic are you about the potential for the space program and exploring in the next generation? I think it all depends on us. I'm asked that quite a bit by students. Well, what's going to happen? I said, it's really up to you. We live in a great democracy in which allowed us to go to the moon because the people were behind it. And that, that venture allowed us to develop the technologies, the new companies, the new jobs, made us com competitive, made us one of the, the great economies and, and uh, social environments uh, in the world mm -hmm. that people want to come to, right? right. But if, once you stop doing that, history shows that those nations go into oblivion. You can name uh, throughout the history of naval exploration, mm -hmm. for example, those countries that were leading and no longer uh, you know, stopped. 
uh, either burned their ships in the harbor or just stopped exploring. And you've seen evidence of what kids don't know. We were talking about that <laughs> yes. earlier, about what they don't know about our space programs. Well, uh, you know, we've had a space station with people in it now for the entire educational lifetime of a K through 12. And yet I have, even in the Houston area, appeared at schools where they didn't know we had a space station in Earth orbit, where other countries that invite us uh, do know, mm -hmm. countries that don't even have a space program, because they teach it in the schools because of that inspirational factor and because that's part of this century. And uh, so we're, we're hoping that by focusing on uh, Texas and, and the Houston area and getting back into the schools and in the universities that we can remind people about what we've achieved, but also inspire them to the future and talk about what's up there right now. Mm -hmm. We'll have a, a video downlink at our Congress from the uh, nine people that were on the space station two weeks ago. Okay. Nine. Right. And we have people staying up for a year and we're getting ready for Mars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so it's, it's an exciting time, but we need that momentum to continue because the rest of the world is also moving in that direction. A week long planetary Congress and it's free to the public? Yes, uh, now the, we have different locations and we're going to live stream because there may not always be access. We'll be at Space Center Houston on Monday and Tuesday. We'll be out across Texas talking to schools on Wednesday. Uh, we have some sessions uh, on Thursday at Rice University and we'll be live streaming all that and that'll be on our website which is uh, ASC2019.org. And then uh, uh, Friday we'll be uh, doing, um, we'll actually have our own excursion to the Lone Star Flight Museum. So that's that's our lone, lone we're going to watch uh, this great air show practice that we put on here in Houston and show the astronauts and the cosmonauts from around the world what we can do in Houston. Good deal. I hope it's going to be a success. We'll try to do what we can to make sure the weather's good for you, all Thank of our you. guests from all over the world. Thank you for what you've done and what you continue to do, inspiring young people. I, I needed somebody like you when I was growing up. That would have been a good thing. They well, were probably around, but I didn't, I didn't know they were there. But. Well, and, and I appreciate that thought, but I always tell kids, don't wait till someone else is number, for, number one or first. Think about yourself and be number first. Dr. Bonnie Dunbar, thank you so much. Hey, when well, you can get more from information, including the website, in case you missed it, on clicktohouston.com on the Newsmakers page.